morning di macheloni tumelang kuya more bondia um bonjo eh what other language eh molo sanibona i think i've covered a few languages um my name is shumani i'm one of the members of moreleta congregation and uh, most of you my family you know me um let me also start by sending a word of appreciation to all the mothers and uh, my mom is now 89 years old very well blessed and i know and uh, that this is because of my prayers i pray that she must live a long life so that she can see us and see our grand daughters and i want also to appreciate and pray for all of you mothers that may the almighty god keep you well and put you in his own hand and i want to also to appeal to all those men who are abusing women and children all these children and all these mothers all belong to us men stop it it is against the love and the will of god thank you very much and god bless you we are continuing with the uh, theme of the month you might have heard so many um, few uh, messages the compare com- compassion the church character what is this that we every time we come together what are we trying to do what are we trying to build what kind of a church are we trying to build i'm going to speak today uh, on the topic which, which says compassion within your circle that is compassion love within your circle amongst those that are next to you regardless of their ethnic groups regardless of their tribes regardless of their color compassion within your circle and my message will be based in the book of john chapter number 13 and the main verse will be verse number 34 but you can go and read it at your own time and at your own space relaxing at home it's a very good verse compassion within your circles the bible that we read every day you know says we are to love one another it sounds good when one is talking about it but can we do it whoever said i love mankind it is people i can't stand that person will be correct people are just irritating i agree with my with, with the guy who said to live above the those who love or to live next to those who glorify the name of god brethren love is a commandment from god love is a commandment from god we do not have to practice it we have to do it and in verse number 34 jesus says this is the new commandment that i give you love one another because i loved you all so it's a commandment in the military terms it's an order you must do it for you to qualify yourself to be called a child of the most high god you have to do it you have to love you have to love one another and when you love your love will overflow to your neighbors and to everyone next to you within your circle wherever you go take note that once you are empowered with love everyone will see even people at the church you know can be difficult to love do you know that sometimes we sing some choruses in church one of the choruses is i'm so glad you are part of the family of god and then we look at the person beside us and and say i'm surprised you are part of the family of god sometimes it is hard enough to love our own family you know one guy told his wife that if she had really loved him she would have married someone else can you imagine in the house of god how do we make love and compassion dominate a dominating characters of our lives i've got few things that i want few points that i've written down one make love a priority 
make love a priority. Indeed, loving people is difficult. Yet this is what the Bible commands. The Bible says we must love. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning. That is in the book of 1 John chapter number 3, verse number 11. We spend time on what we deem important. For many of us, these choices are valid. Time with family, with friends, work, prayer, saving the poor, fighting for rights, protecting, um, protesting against the wrongs. But as the scripture reminds us, and if I donate all my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body in order to boost, but do not love, I gain nothing. So even if you can sit here today as a church, you say, well, we give to the poor, we have collected clothes, we have collected food, we are giving to the poor. But if you do not have love, it's nothing. If you do not have love, yes, there are people who will give food, will give clothes, and they will say, well, we, we, this is how to show love. No. Even if you do that, you have clothes, you have food, but if you do not love, if you don't have compassion, that is nothing. If you do not have compassion, that is nothing. So as a child of the Most High God, you have to find yourself in love to be able to love others. In other words, you must love yourself first. Once you love yourself and you love your family, then it will be easy to love those who are around you without taking their backgrounds. You will love them unconditionally. You know, Jesus made a point of defining certain ones of this, of, of this one. For he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with, with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. You see, this Jesus realized that if he could not talk about this love, people would just look at him as so, so someone who was in the ministry of healing people. But he said this because he knew. If you read in the chapter that I, I, I gave you, he had even showed it by washing his disciples' legs. I remember Paul said, no, 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 even wash my head. And I can imagine I would have said, oh, wash, wash, me, wash the whole body because I would have wanted to be clean and to be filled with love. You know, every thought, response, and act of goodwill must first pass through the fine filter of love or it, or it means nothing. Let me repeat this. Every thought, response, and act of goodwill must first pass through the fine filter of love or it means nothing at all. In strength of love, you know, one of the greatest preachers of the word, Martin Luther King Jr. once said, encourage us to realize that our responsibility as Christians is to discover the meaning of his command and to seek passionately to live it out in our daily lives. And but that is love. That is love. That is love. Number two, understand the importance of love. Until you understand the importance of love, you'll just carry on as a Christian and as a, as a religious person. So therefore, you need to understand the importance of love. When Jesus spoke to his disciples regarding the first and the second greatest commandment, he explained some few things. He said, all the law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. It means whether you prophesy, whether you preach, whether you minister to, if you do not have love, you just you are a sounding gong, a sounding drum. So everything that we do as Christians, it is, it is, it is brought in one word, love. So you have to understand the importance of love. And it is also written, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And one of the commandments that I'm talking about is love your neighbors just as you love me. It is very, very important as Christians that we must also love one another. It is a key point. You must love one another. You have no choice. As Christians, we have no choice but to love one another. Because, you know, let me tell you, 
it is once you do that, that is the fulfillment of the law of Christ. It is the fulfillment of the law of Christ. Love is a commandment and therefore it is a fulfillment of the law. Praise the Lord. Therefore, you know, Paul also, you know, interpreted the, the, the issue of love uh, from Jesus' commandments. That it, 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 love fulfills the law, which is equally simple. For if one loves his neighbor, he will not commit adultery. He will not kill his neighbor. He will not steal from him. He will not discriminate. He will love him unconditionally. If you love your co-worker, you will help them. If you, are, you love your a fellow Christian, you will help them. You will advise them. You will guide them. You know, I thank God for our church that we have, you know, extended our love to some men and women, mostly men who are in our shelter. Every time when I walk into that hall, I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of love. And every time when you go there and minister, you can see men and men who have changed, who have embraced love because we have given it to them. So children of God, let us continue to do that. Let us love one another. And this love that we have, it will overflow and it shall, shall be seen by all. Number three, embody the, the, the distinguishing nature of love. When we demonstrate Christian love, it distinguishes believers from the rest of the world. It means when you show the love that Christ talked about, you differ from what the world talks about. You know, Jesus, in the, in the book of um, John, Jesus goes on in the verse number 13. He says, by this love, all people will know that you are my disciples. Listen, by this love, all people will know. So it means once we have this love, all people will know. And hear me, children of God, that once people know, they will come to us and they will ask, what is it that you have? And then we will minister to them. We will tell them that it's the God Almighty, the Almighty who has given us this, come and let's fellowship together. And people will know God through the action, through the actions that they've seen, through, be, through us as children of God. Hallelujah. From the very beginning, God's plan was to develop a people that reflected his character. From the beginning, God wanted people who will reflect his character. So if you are sitting there, you are still doubting or you are still not sure who to love. Love your neighbor. Love one another. And God will see you. God will look at you and say, this is my child. God will see you and say, this is my child. God will see you and say, this is my child. Believers are God's advertisement to a watching society as to how individuals could best live in this society. As Christians, we are God's advertisement. God uses us to advertise his love. He uses us. He doesn't use poor or rich people. He uses his children with no attachment of names. He uses us all to advertise his love to the society which is watching, which is looking at us. So take note that what, as a Christian and with full of love, when you're walking, you're advertising the love of God. You are advertising the love of God. You are advertising the love of God. You know, I, I, I've met so many people in our church outside. You know, they will come, some people who are not coming to our church, they will say, why are you coming to this church? Eh? Why are you coming to this church? And, I will say, and, and they will even attach the, you know, the name to say, oh, okay, you are, you are coming to a church where, which is only full of white people and you are only a black person. I will say, oh, okay. Um, uh, the churches may be white or the same or whatever, but the hands and the welcome in the house of God in this house is great. The welcome is so great. You will never see or even recognize the color that you're wearing because this 
It's full of love. Love is a commandment. And that is the virtue of love incarnated. The kind of love makes a difference. Christ has no hands, but our hands. Christ has no feet, but our feet. We are his ambassadors, representing him in this world. And when we love as he has loved us, it will make the most difference. People will notice. If we love like he loved us, people will notice. He will, the people will notice and see the difference. Christian's love is indispensable. You cannot dilute it. It is open. It's on the open. It is indispensable. That is Christian's love. The last point, demonstrate the virtue of love. How do we demonstrate this? Because virtue is moral action we practice. How can we practice the glorious virtue of love? Love values the other person. You have to value another person without looking at where they come from. Love is the spirit in the heart that will never seek anything but the highest goodness of God. That is love. I repeat, love is a commandment. Love is a commandment. And love is vulnerable to the other person. Love is a commandment. To love is to be vulnerable. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to one, not even to an animal. Wrap it carefully around with the hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglement. Lock it up in a safe in the casket or coffin or of your selfishness. But in the casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. Instead, it will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. And that is love. That is the love that I'm talking about. Love entails a cost. Love gets its hands dirty. It takes a chance. It goes out of the limb. It takes a gamble. Love makes a statement and leaves a legacy. What are you doing as a child of God? Take note. I'm not saying, well, as Christians, we should constantly abuse ourselves or become passive dormants. No. But Christians' love inevitably carries costs. Even when the cost is high, we can nevertheless count on God to bring fulfillment to his followers. True love always costs. If you love, you, you will feel it. You love even in a difficult situation. You know, I can tell you standing here, there are areas where sometimes I'm, I'm scared to go. But you know, because I love, I will say I'm going there because I'm, I must go and assist this person. You know, uh, this morning I went to a place. I took one of the uh, men in the shelter. And you know, there's always this perception that when you get, get to that place, your car will be taken. I prayed about it last night. I said, God, I'm going to save one of your own. And I love this thing. I love to do this job because I love this person. And guess what? I went, drove to the, uh, around the streets, even to the family. The place was so awesome, even in the house. So it's a cost. It's a cost. The cost is high. It's when you love. Children of the Most High God, the goal of the Christian life is love. You can do all these things, everything that you, you, that you can name, but the goal of a Christian's life is love. The measure of our maturity is our love for God and our love for others. If you can do that, then you are wasting your time. If you will fail in our love, we have missed what it means to be a Christian. Then we fail heaven. If we can do that, we fail heaven. But there's a hope for the one who has failed in love. At the beginning, you remember I asked you a question. Can we do it? Can we love others in this way? The answer is no. We can't. 
But we cannot love others, others like Christ and without Christ. We can only do this with Christ in us. So Christ in us help us to love one another. Christ in us enables us. So it means Christ is our enabler. He's an, our enabler. He helps us to be able to love one another without any question. You don't look at me and you think, well, this person is lovable. The Christ in me will reflect in you. As I conclude, the Lord who forgave us is the one who, who, who was crucified. You remember Jesus forgave those who crucified him. He was ready to forgive them, even at the point of killing him, at the point of, you know, crucifying him. He says, forgive them, Lord, for they don't, don't know what they are doing. The same Jesus who forgave those who crucified him stands ready to forgive you and I for the lack of love. If you lack it, take note and have hope and believe that Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior has already forgiven you. He has forgiven you because he knows that it is difficult. But it is to, it because he knows it's difficult and it's costly. But he has done it. So because he has done it and it's in us, we can do it. You can't do it without Christ. You have to have Christ in you. You have to accept Christ in you to be able to love yourself and others. He wants to show his mercy towards you today to cleanse your loveless heart and fill it with his loving Holy Spirit. If you are seated wherever you are sitting and you are saying, well, I have a, a loveless heart and I need to be filled with the love of God. I pray this morning that you receive the love of God in Jesus' name. Receive his mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive his forgiveness. Please place your trust in Christ and let him teach you how to love as he has loved you. Ensure that you accept Christ in you in order for you to love one another in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you and God bless you. I pray this morning that may the loving hands of the Lord touch you wherever you are seated, wherever you are, in the mighty name of Jesus. May you love unconditionally. May you be filled by Christ, the enabler of love. I pray and I give him glory and honor for his God Almighty. He is a God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He does not change. He will always be God. He is in the course of changing people's life and giving them more love to love one another. In Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Thank you very much and God bless you.